My father was born in el barrio de Cantera, and my mother was born in el barrio de Ausubo, which is also in Ponce. Both towns, you know, are in Ponce. Were your parents raised there? Yes, my mother and father were both raised there in Ponce. Did they go to school? Yes, what, they did. What grade did they go? Um, my father finished up to the eighth grade, and my mother finished the third year of high school. Were any of your brothers and sisters born in Puerto Rico? No, we were all born here in the United States. And how many brothers and sisters do you have? I have two brothers, and I'm the only girl. Um, what year did your parents migrate to the United States? My father came here first. He came in 1945, mm -hmm. and my mother came in 1948, later on. And what was the reason for your mother and father coming here? Okay, um, my mother came because her father had died and she was the eldest of the children in the house and she wanted to try to, you know, get a job to to help, you know, her mother, but she also thought that she could finish high school when she came here, but, you know, when she came she found that she needed the money more, you know, really bad, so she went and she got a job instead of finishing her high school. And my father came because he was a merchant seaman and the ship had come to the United States and then he heard that it was a job opportunity and all that, so he decided to stay also. And what did he do when he was in Puerto Rico? What kind of job did he have? Well, before he, w he took the job as a merchant seaman in Puerto Rico, he worked in a camp, uh, an army training camp. What exactly he did there, I don't know. Where did your mother live? when she came from Puerto Rico to the United States? She lived on 13th and Gerard Avenue. That's like north? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, where did your father live? My father when he came? I don't know. Was his education? Yes, he did. He um, recently got his GED, but my mother never did get her on um, high school. Okay. Did you work or your brothers? Did as a child? Did you have to work? No, not as a child. No. What type of job did your mother have? Like, what other job did she have besides? Okay, when she first came here, she worked as a nurse's aide in a hospital. Then after that, I think about a year later, she said she worked in a factory and they trained her how to sew by hand. That's what she did, was sewing by hand. And she stuck to that for just about, um, for like 20 something years. Did, did your parents? Um, they knew each other from Puerto Rico and they met again here, but they knew each other originally from Puerto Rico, but they met, you know, here again, and they got married here in the States, but, you know, they knew each other from over there. Were any of your parents away from home for a long period of time? My father was always away from home for a long period of time because he was a merchant seaman all his life, and, you know, he would go away for months, sometimes even close to a year, it, depending on, on where the trip was. You know, if it was really far, like, to Africa or something, you know, he came really, you know, he wouldn't be home for a long time. If you ever got picked up by the police, who would you call? I guess I would, um, call my brother. Why would you call your brother? Probably not to scare my mother. It probably would scare her if I would call her. Do you have, like, more confidence in your brother? No, not really. It's just that that's probably why I would call my mother. Because I wouldn't want to scare her. It's not that, you know, I'm closer to my brother okay. than to her. I used to know a few of them, but I, I have forgotten them. Um, have you ever visited La Botanica? Yes. For what reason? Um, to get, like, um, you know, Agua Florida, that you use, like, to take baths. Did you feel better after you, you, you took the bath? Did it make well, you feel actually, better? Well, actually... What was the reason for taking the bath? 
Okay, actually, w right, was to make me feel better, but, um, I, I, I guess I didn't, you know, it really didn't make that much difference. Don't e I don't even know why I went there to buy, you know, I really... Do you believe in insane or spiritualism? No, I don't. Did you ever believe in things? Or yeah, I guess I, as a child, it? yes, as a child I did, but as I grew older, I, I, you know... I don't believe in that anymore. I don't believe in saints or spiritualism or anything like that. What church do you attend or what church have you attended? Okay, I used to attend Catholic church. Now, how often would you attend the church? Well, I used to attend it very often, but now I don't attend it at all. Mm -hmm. What holidays do you observe? Um, Christmas, New Year's, those holidays. Do you observe any holidays like that? It's all Saints Day. Oh, no, no, yeah. no. And, uh, Well, that is basically used in Puerto Rico. We don't, we don't celebrate that here. Really, I mean, you know, that, very few people do celebrate it. Which I celebrate Christmas and New Year's Eve. That's it. Going back to, to church, I'm sorry that I have to go back, but what was the reason for you not attending church anymore? I don't know, I just, I, I, I kind of fell out of it, I don't know why, um, I felt that, you know, I don't know w for what reason I was going there to, to pray when I could do it at home, or whenever I wanted to talk to God, I could do it at my own time, I, I didn't feel right, you know, just, I don't know, I felt, I don't know why it was necessary for me to go to a, a, a temple or a church and, and pray to statues or to a man who's a priest when he's just as human as I am. You know, I just... What church did you attend? What I attended, um, I attended La Milagrosa Chapel, and I attended St. Boniface Church, and I've also attended St. Peter's and Paul in the Parkway. Okay. The Catholic churches. Yeah. The church St. Peter's and Paul, did a lot of Puerto Ricans and Spanish speaking go there? Well, we had, yeah, Spanish people went there, but not a lot. You know, it wasn't a lot of Spanish people, but they were. What kind of activities did they have there for, for young people? They had really nice activities. You know, we used to go on alboradas and, and spiritual, you know, outings, which were nice at the time. You know, I, I believed in it at the time, but um, that wore off. Mainly, you know, it was like mainly most of my friends were going there and... And they were young people the same age as I was. And I enjoyed it at the time. You know, I believed in it at the time. But as I grew older and we grew apart, it kind of just faded away. You know, like anything else, really. Who is your means to getting to church? Did you use public transportation? No, I used to drive. I had a car. What type of record album do you own? I have disco music. I have salsa. And I have a little bit of soul music also. Which do you like best? You know, is there a Salsa. Salsa. Yeah, I like Spanish music. Do you play an instrument or write poetry? What are some of your hobbies? I don't play an, an instrument or write poetry. That's an art that I never did have. I wish I did. But um, hobbies, I like to dance. And... Um, I like to, you know, do things with my hands. Not that I know how to do too much, but, you know, I like to work with my hands. I'm making a rug now with my hands, uh, uh, you know, out of yarn. Are you interested in learning, or are you going to pick up any courses or anything like Yes, I'm pretty soon taking up a course in macrame, which is also an art, with um, thread. Okay. Dealing with thread. Yesterday for dinner? I had um, lobster with um, stuffed mushrooms and potatoes. What is your favorite food? My favorite food is a Spanish dish. What's your favorite food? Rice, beans, chicken, and tortones. Do you eat Spanish food often? Yes, I do. Often. Mm -hmm. 
what types of what types of foods are usually pre prepared at home? Spanish foods are usually prepared at home, usually. Not all the time. We, you know, we will change every now and then and have something else. What is your favorite restaurant? I like seafood a lot. I can, you know, I, I like that a lot. That's my favorite restaurant. Going like to seafood places to seafood. Do you go to any of the Spanish restaurants? Yes, I do. Sometimes I go to the bo boil, and I have um, Spanish food when I feel like eating Spanish food. Mm -hmm. Marriages? No, I don't. Personally, I don't know any of them. What language is usually spoken at your home? English, unfortunately. And why is it English? I guess basically because we've, we've been born and raised here so long that that's, you know, exactly what we speak. We still speak more Spanish, really. It's the same. That's what happens when you live here so many years. Is everyone in Yes, we all do know how to speak Spanish, except that, um, you know, we don't practice it that much because everything is spoken in English. And when which, where, which um, languages are the most fluent? English. How many different, how many different places have you lived in Philadelphia? I guess about four different places. The exact addresses I don't remember too good because I was uh, I was either not born or I was a child. So I don't remember exactly the addresses. And where do you live now? I live in North wow. Philadelphia, Second Street. Living in neighborhood? Yes. They live close by to my neighborhood, my relatives. Yes. Okay. Um, what was the reason for you moving into your place in the reason because it was a better house and a better neighborhood. In what sense? In the sense that, um, actually, you know, the the conditions were better. What we had before was an apartment, and here we were buying, actually buying. My father was buying a house. The neighborhood also was um was a little more quieter, I guess you can call it. You know, a little bit more peaceful in that sense. That's what I mean. What was the race from in the neighborhood? The one we moved into? No, the one we moved into. Yeah. Um, it was basically um, Polish people when we first moved, and a few, excuse me, a few Spanish, very few, and um, I think one black family was the only one that was living with a black family. Did you feel like that you were part of your neighborhood? Well, see, I was young then. I was very young when we first moved in. I was like maybe 10 years old and I guess as a child you know you don't think much of that I felt at home in my house as far as in the neighborhood you know I'm, I didn't go out that much to play in the neighborhood you how know, about like, now how do you feel now oh now now sure you know I'm I'm part of them you know I feel at home I mean it's my neighborhood what kind of services do you feel that your community serves you what kind of services do they have in the community? Well, we do have, um, close by to my neighborhood, or rather in my neighborhood, we have a community service for the, the, um, older people, for the senior citizens. They have free lunches for them. They also teach them, you know, English, they have classes for English. Um, my grandmother used to go there before she died, and, um, she had, you know, free lunches, which is good because a lot of senior citizens don't have enough money for, you know, the lunches. And also, you know, teach some English, which a lot of them never did get the opportunity to learn English. That's one good, you know, um, service that they have. Kennedy, would you move to your neighborhood? Yes, I, I would. Why? because um, I guess I'm a little tired of my neighborhood already. You know, like, I'm just, I've been there for a lot of years now, and it's always nice to have a change. And not only that, but my neighborhood is actually falling apart. You know, it's really, the houses are, are baked in a lot of them, and it's getting dirtier and dirtier. And I just would like to move into someplace a little bit more, you know, cleaner.
Are there any bodegas around your neighborhood? Bodegas? Yeah, we have um, we have a few bodegas around my neighborhood. How about when you first? Do you remember, like, when you were growing up, they have any bodegas or, you know? A no, they didn't. You know, you're right. They didn't have many bodegas. They had um, stores, American-owned stores, but bodega with Spanish food. No, that's recent. You know, that mm -hmm. they have it since more. You know, Puerto Rican people started to move into the neighborhood. Then I guess. You know, they found it very necessary, so then, you know, someone got the idea to open one or two, and now we have a few. Could you remember, um, did, your did your parents have to go out of, they had to go out of neighborhood to get food? Like, yeah, do you right. Where? I don't remember where, but um, they did go out, you know, to get, like, Spanish food, but I don't remember where because I was young. How many times have you traveled to Puerto Rico? About five different times. When was the last time? This past summer, 76, I went. Did you go to visit any relatives or just went no, on your own? I didn't go, no, I don't have any relatives in Puerto Rico. All my relatives are here in the States. I went to visit friends that I have there and, you know, to have, just to visit, you know, and have a, a good time, vacation. Have you ever planned? Back to I hope someday, yes, I would like to go back to live. Have you, have you ever attempted to become permanently? No, I never did. No. No. Thank you. As an adult? Um, I was a clerk typist, my first job. And I, I also did, you know, um, it was part-time and I also did part-time sales work as a sales girl. That was my first job as an adult, a young adult. What other jobs have you had? I, um, I've worked also in a hospital as a um, statistical clerk, and they, you know, they train me for that, on the job training. And I, I moved up from there as a lab technician, which they also train me to draw blood and, um, to do uh, sputum analysis, preparing specimens, sputum specimens. Actually, it's laboratory work, and I, you know, in a hospital lab. Okay, that's and that's what I'm doing now. Okay, that's good. Are you in the union? No, I'm not. We don't. We do have a union, but it's for the what they call non-professional, which you know, since like nurses, doctors, and technicians are what they consider professional, so we don't have a union, and the non-professionals do have a union. Have you ever been discriminated against? Discriminated against? I guess I have, in small ways. Yeah, I guess I have, yes. You know, the small experiences, but I don't remember, you know, offhand, a lot of them. I have an experience where, you know, I felt that I was being discriminated against was when I was trying to get an apartment in a basically all Italian neighborhood. Um, you know, the girl seemed nice, but you could tell that she, you know, she didn't want Spanish people living there. And she, you know, she said she'd call me and she never did. So I got that impression that I was being discriminated against because I was Puerto Rican. Is this recently? Yes, this was recently. Were any of your jobs ever dangerous, or is your job dangerous now? Well, I guess you can call it a little dangerous. I'm exposed to a lot of chemicals which aren't harmful. The vapors aren't harmful. As far as, you know, what I would call really, really dangerous, you know, I don't know if I could call it that, but it, it is harmful, you know, for, for my health. <laughs> What is the longest period of time you have held the job? Right now, I've held my job for four years. That's the longest. Have you ever been unemployed? No. For what reasons have you left or been fired from your job? Well, the only reasons I've left was to get a better job. All the time that I did leave was for a better job. I already had, you know, gotten the job and then moved on to something. Do you feel that your present income is sufficient? Well, I don't think 
okay, I'm, I'm, I can't say I'm satisfied with what, with what I'm making. I am living on with what I'm making, but I wish I made more, yes. Okay, um, I would like, I would, you know, someday to go back to school and, you know, further my education. But um, right now, since, you know, I'm living on what I'm making, it's very difficult, you know, just to um, stop working just like that when, you know, I need money to live on. I just, you know, I don't have, I'm um, independent, I live on my own. And to stop, you know, the only way I could do this is if I had some financial aid or something to be able to go back to school because, you know, I have no one who, to, who could support me while I'm going through school. Did, did any of your parents or teachers influence you to work? Or did My, they influence you to go back to school? Well, actually, they didn't influence me at all. I always had, I always had the, you know, I made my own decisions. My mother never pushed me to further my education, which I wish in a way she did, but then again, I don't think it would have mattered because, you know, I was kind of stubborn. You know, I, I wanted to do what I wanted to do, and when I first got out of high school, I said, oh, it's terrific. You know, I'm going to go work. I'm going to make money. That's all I thought about. I didn't think of, well, let me continue my education so I can make more money in the future. I never thought of it that way. I always thought of it, you know, as soon as you get out, you know, get the job, make the money right off the bat. And that's the way, you know, that's what I did. How about your teachers in, in high school? Did they have fun to the school? Yes, they did. They did, but like I said, I was stubborn. I just didn't, wasn't interested. I, you know, I was tired of school and I didn't want to continue. Okay. 